Hello friends! Today I'll show you two ways to save data in Godot 4. First, the cross-platform cheat-proof JSON method, then the Godot resource way of doing it. If you've been using a different game engine like Unity, you might be more familiar with writing save files in JSON. JSON works independent of the game engine you're using since it's just a string, and has the benefit of being human readable, making it easier to debug. And since it's just a string, we can encrypt it to make it unreadable by humans too. No matter what kind of game you're making, you'll need to save the player's progress. Even roguelites have some form of progression. If you're making a true roguelike, you may still want to save other things like the game's settings. In Godot, this is as simple as creating a new script. Let's name it File. Then add it to the list of globals in the project settings. In the script, we'll need a path to save to. Since this will never change, it's better to define it as a constant. Godot provides a shortcut for us, user colon slash slash, which works on any platform, and points to a location which is unique to both the user and the game. We'll then add the file name to the path as something simple like save.json. For games which allow multiple save files, this would be a separate variable. Next, we need to declare a variable which will hold all of the information we will be saving, as a dictionary. Let's call it data. This script will also have functions for starting a new game, saving your game, and loading your game. Since this is a global script, also known as a singleton, other scripts in your game can easily access anything stored in the data dictionary, as well as calling any of these functions. When starting a new game, we'll need to initialize the contents of the data dictionary. As a dictionary contains key value pairs, and every key must be unique, we most often use strings as keys, but they can be any primitive type. The values we store in the player's save file can also be any primitive type. Strings, integers, floating point numbers, and booleans. As well as structures, or classes which contain only primitives, like vectors, or colors. We can also store groups of things in arrays, like the player's inventory and even embed more dictionaries inside our data dictionary for something like the player's equipment, for example. To perform any file input or output, we'll need to declare a new variable of type file access. Then to save this data dictionary as a file, we only need to call three functions. First, opening the file by calling fileaccess.open, giving it the path and file name, and telling it we want to write. This returns a file access instance we can store in the variable. With the file opened for writing, we can store our data as a string, converting the dictionary into a string using json.stringify, then closing the file access now that we're done with it. Loading is very similar to saving, but first we need to check if the file actually exists before we try to open it. Knowing that the file exists, we can again open it, but this time for reading and store the file access instance in our variable. Access.getAsText returns the entire contents of the file as a string, which we can convert back into a dictionary by calling json.parseString, and this can be assigned to the data variable. Lastly, closing the file access now that we are finished loading. Now anything which is stored in the data dictionary will be saved and loaded but the save file can be opened in any text editor, viewed, and edited. While this is very useful for solo and indie developers to be able to debug problems and provide player support after their games are released, some may prefer to encrypt their save files to prevent cheating. Encryption can also be done easily in Godot with minimal change. We'll just declare another variable named key as a string and give it some value. It can literally be anything you want, as long as it's kept secret. We can then change the file access open function calls to open encrypted with pass, which accepts the same first two arguments, but also a string pass. So we'll give it our key. If you want to be even more secure, we can remove the key from this script so it's not easy to find, and also encrypt it too. To do this, we'll write another script, named encryption this time inheriting from resource. If you're coming from Unity, this is similar to a scriptable object. 
Inside the script, we'll give it a class name, encryption, and only one variable named key as a string, which must be exported. In Unity, this would be the same as serializing the variable. We can now create a new resource for our script of type encryption. Then in the inspector, give the key a value. Again, this can be anything you want, but should be kept secret. Back in the file global script, we'll declare a variable of type encryption, and overriding the ready function, tell Godot's resource loader to load the encryption resource and store it in the variable. Our file access open function calls can now use encryption.key, and there is no reference to the encryption key's value anywhere in this script. If we try to open the encryption resource from outside of Godot, it can't be easily read since it is a binary file. You might be thinking, if we can write a script that contains anything we want and have it automatically unreadable, why not just use this method to store the save file? We can absolutely do that in Godot, and it is my preferred method of creating save files for my games. Just like we created the encryption resource script, we can create a data resource script. Inside the data resource script, we can declare any variables we want as long as they are the same primitive or structure types and export them. Back in the file global script, we'll change the file name extension to .res and the type of data to data. Starting a new game becomes just setting data to data.new. Saving only requires a single line, resource saver.save, giving it the data resource and the path appended to the file name. Loading, still checking if the file exists first with resource loader.exists, then assigning the value of data to be resource loader.load, giving it the same path and file name. This requires no encryption and separates the contents of the save file from how it is accessed. If you want to return to the human readable format for your game save files, all that is required is to change the resource file extension to text resource. This is also a great way of saving game settings. So which method do you prefer? Is there anything else you need help with? Let me know in the comments. You can find out more on how to integrate systems like this into your game on my Patreon, where you'll get early access to all of my content, full access to all of my courses, and some exclusive projects I don't share anywhere else. You can also find my courses on Udemy and Skillshare. I'll see you in the next video.